Hello dear friends of human spaceflight! So recently the senior Chinese lunar program designer said in an interview that China could pull off a manned moon landing maybe even before 2030. And just in September this year Chinese plans surfaced of how the CNSA is contemplating to use two modified Long March 5 rockets in order to accomplish the first Chinese moon landing earlier than expected. Meanwhile in the US the NASA Administrator Nelson admitted that a 2024 moon landing date is not really realistic and that this date would most likely slip to possibly as late as 2026. So can China really win this new moon race? Let's find out. So before we start this topic, let's get one thing right out of the way. As if to anticipate all the smart ass comments that the US has already won this moon race long ago, as they have already landed on the moon 50 years ago. Yes, the US has landed on the moon between 1969 and 1972 six times with 12 people walking on the lunar surface as part of the legendary Apollo program. However, currently the US does not have that capability anymore. The US had abandoned all continued plans to land humans on the moon as early as during that Apollo program itself, because of budget cuts by Congress. There were even plans to build large moon bases as part of the Apollo applications program and the lunar exploration systems for Apollo. But these plans were abandoned since the main point was to beat the Soviets and not to advance humanity and science. Politicians' short-sightedness at its best, because afterwards we could witness a technological regression of epic proportions, where a nation would go from being able to land on the moon to not being able to even reach low Earth orbit on its own in a course of only a few decades. We humans take technological progress for granted, as if it is something that comes effortlessly on its own. But we must not forget that there are plenty of examples from human history, where technologically advanced civilizations collapsed and their knowledge and technology were lost rendering the succeeding generations unable to even come close to the level of their ancestors. For example, it would take over a thousand years for Europe to even come close to the engineering achievements that were standard practice during antiquity. So as the US had entered a steep technological decline, they had lost this capacity to land astronauts on the moon. Therefore, as they do not possess this ability anymore, please spare me the comments of but the US has already won the moon race 50 years ago, thank you very much. Therefore, the effort of landing astronauts on the moon again qualifies as a new moon race after a 50 year dark ages of human spaceflight if you will. China are now the new Soviets and they had been quite open about landing their own Taikonauts the Chinese version of astronauts, on the moon for at least 10 years. But their timeline for achieving this feat had always been by 2030 at the earliest and probably more like uh, 2035. But this has changed this year. First, back in September, the chief designer of the Long March family of rockets said that China could use two modified Long March 5 launches in order to land on the moon, as compared to the previous plan of using the super heavy lift rocket Long March 9 in order to accomplish this task. The Long March 9 will be basically the Chinese Saturn V or the Chinese SLS, depending on how you see it. It is a non-reusable rocket with a payload capability of 140 metric tons to low Earth orbit, around the same of the good old Saturn V. However, the problem with this rocket is quite similar to what the US is facing with the SLS. The development timeline is quite long and this rocket will quite likely not be ready for test flights before 2030. So instead of repeating an Apollo-like mission architecture and launch the entire mission on one single Long March 9 rocket, the Long March chief designer said that two modified Long March 5 rocket launches 
could be used in order to land before 2030. This would correspond roughly to Robert Zubrin's proposal from back in 2018 to use three Falcon Heavy and one Falcon 9 launch in order to land on the moon at a much lower cost and much faster than the current SLS mission architecture would allow for. The first Falcon Heavy launch would deploy cargo to the moon and fuel generators with an automated moon lander that would remain on the moon. A second Falcon Heavy launch would deploy a 12 metric ton habitat module together with life support equipment, tools and scientific payload. The third launch would launch the moon lander and the service module to orbit. A Falcon 9 would then launch the astronauts with Crew Dragon. They would dock in Earth orbit, transfer to the moon lander plus service module and initiate the lunar injection burn. In orbit, they would descend to the surface with the lunar lander, where a small fully automated base would already be waiting for them. Fuel for the return trip would be generated via ISRU, in situ resource utilization, directly on the moon from water ice deposits. It seems that China paid a lot of attention to these plans, as a launch of two modified Long March 5 rockets does sound a lot like the launch of two Falcon Heavies, as these modified Long March 5s, called Long March 5 DUI, will basically be non-reusable versions of the Falcon Heavy. This more powerful Long March 5 will have an LEO payload capability of 70 metric tons, which is even a bit more than the Falcon Heavy with its 65 metric tons, and it will be able to bring 27 metric tons to lunar transfer orbit, so it is quite powerful. The mission architecture would foresee two launches of these Chinese Falcon Heavies. One would launch the moon lander itself, that would already enter lunar orbit and wait for the Taikonauts there. Then a second Long March 5 DY would launch with the astronauts in a deep space capsule and an attached service module. The spacecraft would dock to the moon lander in lunar orbit, where the Taikonauts would transfer to the lander and carry out the surface mission. After the surface mission, they would return to moon orbit, dock with a capsule plus service module and return to Earth, where they would splash down in the ocean in the capsule Apollo style. As we saw, this mission architecture has some similarities with the Apollo architecture, but also some differences, as two 70 metric ton launchers would achieve what alternatively a 140 metric ton launcher would have done. This way, China could land on the moon before 2030, and this was again recently emphasized also by the senior Chinese lunar program designer. He said in an interview with CCTV that, quote, I personally think that as long as technological research for crewed moon landings continues, as long as the country is determined, a Chinese crewed moon landing is entirely possible by 2030, end quote. China's next five-year plan could, if political will is high enough, include a manned moon landing in the time frame 2026 to 2030. And please subscribe to this channel if you like non-standard SpaceX here, Starship there, space news with an additional dose of sometimes unnecessarily exaggerated sarcasm. Thanks a lot in advance. And what is Uncle Sam doing meanwhile? Well, instead of accelerating the return to the moon and make it a super pressing matter, the schedule instead slips further and further down the road. SpaceX is being held up by an American agency, the FAA, that chooses to follow a super slow and bureaucratic regulatory process and thus effectively postpone Starship super heavy test launches into next year. Then, US politicians in the Congress force the American Space Agency to use a basically extremely weird and cumbersome mission architecture for moon landings, by keeping the space launch system alive as long as they can. Thus, SpaceX will be forced to dock to an Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit, which just looks absolutely hilarious in how tiny it is compared to the moon Starship. This will limit the capability severely, only allowing four astronauts per launch for a mission because the astronauts will have to be launched in an Orion capsule. And also, only one moon mission 
per year, as the old space contractors are struggling to build more than one SLS rocket per year because the whole thing is thrown away after every launch, old school style. Thus, while the US is limiting itself in every possible way, it seems that China is instead learning from the US how not to do it and instead tries to accelerate the process. Now sure, the big unknown here is SpaceX. We could argue that SpaceX might be able to achieve Starship flight readiness by 2022, then after launching at least 100 times without incident, maybe by 2024, the first human lunar round trip mission could be performed on a Starship and SpaceX could choose to carry out their own lunar missions and just bypass the pathetic SLS and Orion spacecraft approach. Instead, they would do private moon missions such as the Inspiration mission. We are pretty sure they would find many customers willing to pay a hefty price tag in order to become the first private individuals ever to walk on the moon. SpaceX could launch 10 to 20 astronauts per mission, where the astronauts would be launched on a crew starship and then docked to the lunar starship that had been already fueled beforehand with tanker starships. The lunar starship would then be able to land on the moon and return the astronauts to Earth, where they would once again dock with the crew starship in order to return to Earth. If the lunar starship does not take a lot of cargo with it, such a mission architecture would be entirely possible. It would be of course quite a hilarious twist in the whole China vs US moon race story if SpaceX would just bypass this whole political show off and do private moon missions. We shall see how it will turn out, but it is quite fascinating that China is accelerating their moon landing efforts, whereas the US is slowing down. One thing is clear though, the moon must not be left to China. A big shout out to our new editor Raul Marquena, who does an awesome job in editing a lot better than I could ever hope for. So thanks to your viewers for watching this video. All the best from the To The Future team. See you in the next video and on to the future.